Hello, everybody. We'll be starting shortly. Welcome to the Token Metrics webinar. We're so excited to have everybody here. We'll have the whole team here. This is being broadcasted all over the world. We'll give you one hour deep dive into our vision for Token Metrics and where we're trying to take it. And we'll also give you a full demo of Token Metrics and answer any questions you may have. We're very excited to have you here. I see we already have almost 20 people in. People are rolling in. Wow, this, this is amazing. OK, let's give it a few minutes, and then we'll start, OK? All right, all right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. We'll be starting soon. I uh, see we have our, our panel here from all over the all over the world. Hey, hey, Bill, how are you? Ian, good afternoon. Good to be with you. Likewise, likewise. And Sam, how are you doing today? I'm well, Ian. Thanks for having me on. Nice. And Paresh, how about you? Great. Yeah. Thanks for. <coughs> OK, so I think let's hop straight into it, because uh, we definitely don't have much time. So let me here, let me just share my screen, and we'll start shortly. OK? Right. Now, I believe the audience should be able to type in, on the, in the chat. So if anybody has any questions or comments, just feel free to ask them in the chat. OK? All right, so everybody see my screen? Um, yes. What's that? Okay. All right. So as usual, um, our typical disclaimer. Let's just kind of breeze through this here. We, we, we may make forward-looking statements in this, and we're just a regular publication in terms of the content we're creating. And this is not investment advice. We're not in any way, shape, or form asking anybody to buy, hold, or sell any security. Definitely do your due diligence and research. Our team disclosures page is available at tokenmetrics.com slash disclosures. OK. All right. So first of all, on the agenda today, we'll give you a quick team intro. You have a chance to meet the team, our background, who we are. We'll give a presentation on token metrics, a demo, and Q&A. Let's hop into it. OK. So for the last one and a half to almost two years, we've traveled around the world, not investing in cryptocurrency companies me personally, I've made over 60 investments in the crypto space. This year, made our first equity investing in a company from Techstars. But as we've been traveling around the world, so many people have been looking to work with us. And over the course of the last two years, we've traveled around the world, done lots and lots of research and due diligence on people to put together what we now think is an all-star team. So I myself, most of you know me. I'm Ian Bellina. I'm the founder and CEO of Token Metrics. Uh, I'm also a partner at 100X Advisors, which is a blockchain investment and advisory firm. Prior to that, I was working as an executive at IBM in the analytics space, covering IBM Watson Analytics and IBM Open Source Analytics for four years. Prior to that, I was working as an IT consultant at Deloitte Consulting, which is the largest consulting firm in the world. And my background is as a computer engineer, bachelor's and master's. Now, let's head over to Paresh. Paresh, can you please give us a, a quick intro on yourself? Yeah, sure. So, 
I have a master degree in computer science from India, National Institute of Technology. Immediately after master's degree, I joined DESHA, which is a hedge fund company, New York based. I worked there three years on system level programming like C, C, .NET and kind of things. And moved to UK in 2010. Uh, since then, I have been working as a full-stack developer. So I was one of the lead developer in ETX Capital, which is a market-leading uh, um, company in the UK, like real-time trading uh, company. Then I worked with investment banks like uh, Barclays, Goldman Sachs, where I was executive director for three years uh, in global investment uh, research department. Then... Um, after leaving the Goldman, um, I started working on my own as a contractor. Since then, I worked uh, with a few blockchain projects and uh, also worked uh, with the JP Morgan uh, on their uh, JP Morgan and Chase mobile payment application involving uh, their blockchain as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Paris. I mean, so that's definitely quite the background. So Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, uh, payment space, and also, more importantly, you worked in the global investment division for Goldman Sachs. I yeah. mean, so th he definitely brings lots of expertise from the technical side of things to talking about tricks. And then, let's, uh, Bill, please uh, introduce yourself. All right. Hi. So I'm Bill Noble. Uh, I'm a technical analyst by trade. Um, <clears throat> Bottom line is I take this much information and I distill it down into something small and readable so that you can understand it. Uh, I worked at, I started with Morningstar with a little company um, doing research just like we're doing now. I got hired on by Morgan Stanley uh, and helped them navigate the dot-com crash. Uh, from there, I moved to Goldman Sachs where I spent 12 years so I was sort of their volatile markets expert all through the financial crisis uh, and the aftermath. So I've been the volatile market specialist. Uh, I helped retail investors at Charles Schwab. And then I got into the crypto space with Charlie Schrem and his group. Uh, a lot of my friends from Goldman Sachs were really excited to see my work uh, move from the traditional world over to crypto, and it's really gone over to well. It's gone over well, and I'm excited to be here with Ian. All right, thank you, Bill and Sam. Cool. Um, so I graduated UVM with a degree in finance, and I minored in economics. Then I took a job working at Liberty Mutual, um, and it was kind of a dry, a dry corporate job. It wasn't really what I was interested in, and then so. If you move back a little bit in 2012, when I was in high school, there was a really smart anarchist kid who convinced me to buy a couple Bitcoin. So I did, and it was around $10. Um, and then right when I graduated from college, this was worth like much more than $10. As everybody knows, I graduated in 2017. So then I was completely obsessed with learning about Bitcoin and the history of money and with my new knowledge of economics and financial markets, um, the cryptocurrency revolution started really making a lot more sense to me. So early 2017, I, f I feel like I really found my purpose and that was to be involved in cryptocurrency and to really be a part of a cause that I believed in, um, the mission to reinvent money. So this is when I reached out to Ian, uh, whose videos I had seen. I told him I really believed in his vision. I wanted to work with him. Since then, I've analyzed thousands of crypto projects. I was the spreadsheet guy. Um, this is when we believe my research was used by Binance to pick Matic uh, Network at Elrond and Harmony. So we knew about these projects almost a year before their IEOs. Then we took down our spreadsheet. Ever since then, the Binance IEOs aren't doing nearly as well. So <laughs> uh, I've worn many hats working with Ian, written formal reports, connected him with strategic partners like Charlie Schrem. I've moderated panel discussions in front of huge crowds, traveled around the world, networked with him, met projects. And about a year and two months ago, I started working, um, taking weekly calls with a developer, building the token metrics application. You would not believe how many 
breakthrough ideas Ian's had over this long year long process. He keeps on iterating, coming up with revolutionary ideas. It's been amazing to work with such a visionary um, and token metrics has snowballed into an awesome application. I'm so excited to be involved with it. We're really trailblazing a new way of investing in cryptocurrency that I believe will be revolutionary. The team we're working with is also fantastic. Bill and Paresh were crucial additions and their contributions have been nothing short of extraordinary. All right, thank you, Sam. That, that was great. So we also have Agam, who, who's our data scientist. So he helps us with the machine learning models, making sure they're optimized and working more, uh, powerfully so that they're always making money for you. Then we also have Manan, who's helping build the token metrics platform. All right, so I think that's enough about the team. Let's hop into the actual presentation. So right now we're at the cusp of a research revolution. Just think about that for a second. Not just a revolution, but a research revolution. As somebody, us on our team, who's traveled to over 35 countries in, in 12 months, meeting people face to face at events as big as a thousand people in London, a thousand people in Russia, 600 in Amsterdam, going to South America, to Buenos Aires, Argentina, going to Africa, uh, to Kampala, Uganda, Ghana, Lagos, Nigeria, going to the Middle East, to Tel Aviv, Israel, Dubai. We've seen everybody in the crypto space and we've seen more importantly how they leverage crypto. And the biggest issue we've seen has been research. Research is crucial. Research is vital to this financial revolution. So if we go back to 2017 with token metrics, think of that spreadsheet as token metrics version 1.0. Token metrics really fathered what is now the token metrics community and ecosystem. If you, it, it fostered and built almost all the other influencers in the space. So from Oye Maddy to other people, we built a real community. Token metrics in a way, that spreadsheet was really the first professional crypto research tool out there that was made accessible to the public and was made free. And this really built an entire community because we made this open source. And in 2017, this really showed us the product market fit and the need for this in, in when it comes to crypto research. But in 2018, we saw something drastic change. In 2018, we took down the spreadsheet in January 2018 at the peak of the bull market because we saw that in its current format, it could not scale. In its current format, the market had changed. The market had changed to a point where we had to go back to the drawing board and rebuild something that could scale to over 1 million users. And over the last almost two years now, we spent our own money bootstrapping this, spending millions of dollars into research and development to build something that will take care of the next generation of crypto investing and crypto research. Because the old way of doing things did not work anymore. We've seen that happen. Markets go up and down in cycles. And we knew to really build something we had the best customer research. We had an audience, a platform of over 1 million people would access the spreadsheet every single month who told us exactly what they wanted. And we spent our own money building that. So not just building that behind a, a, a computer screen, traveling around the world, meeting these companies. If we rate a company, we'll travel and meet these companies face to face and do further due diligence on our own dime. And doing this entire process, we realized that, okay, you know what? to really make something that can take crypto to the next level, we have to build Tokenmetrics 2.0, which is a next generation research platform, which is a platform we've launched on Black Friday last month. But this is not the end of Tokenmetrics. This is just the, the, the next step. The real goal, the real vision of Tokenmetrics is building Tokenmetrics 3.0, which is a robo-advisor, building a fully regulated US compliant robo-advisor. Initially, it will be U.S. compliant, but the vision is to make this global compliant, meaning that building a platform that not only does the research for you, but also automates the investing for you, because that's something we've learned. If I had a, a penny for every time somebody said, hey, Ian, I wish I could invest with you. You guys have the best deal flow. Can we invest with you? Can, can we invest in a pool with you? We already said no, because there wasn't really a matter to do it in a compliant and regulated fashion. And what we're working on is really building the next generation of that, something that's fully compliant, SEC regulated. Uh, this year, I went through and did my Series 65 investment advisor exam. And now we're in the process of working hard towards applying with the SEC to get fully licensed. Once that happens, we think the next generation of crypto investing will be here. 
And this is something crypto has been asking for. Okay, but before we hop into that, we have to really stop and ask ourselves, why are you a crypto investor? What made you turn into a crypto investor? For me personally, I was working a full-time job, nine to five at IBM, and I wanted financial freedom. I was working in sales, making almost half a million dollars. I mean, the, most of society would tell me, hey, Ian, you should be grateful, you should be happy, but maybe it's just the person I am, I was never satisfied. I, I told myself, yes, the money is good, but the stress working in enterprise sales, it was cutthroat. So many people fighting over deals, so many people, I mean, <clears throat> the, the challenges I would go through every single day were not, just, were not good for my mental health. So I told myself, okay, you know what? I really have to have my own financial freedom. So because of that, I saw crypto as a way out. I was an active entrepreneur. I had so many things I was working on. I was doing Amazon FBA. I had a video production company. I was working uh, as, a, uh, as an entrepreneur, building my own apps in the Apple App Store. I had so many things I was doing, and I was doing cryptocurrency on the side. And I told myself, okay, if I do an 80-20 analysis on everything I'm doing, which, which particular activity is bringing in the most money with the least effort. When I looked at everything I was doing, it was pretty obvious. It was cryptocurrency investing. And that's when in 2017, I, I chose to go all in into cryptocurrency investing. And it forced me to really bring my expertise of data-driven analysis to crypto. And before the end of the year, I was able to quit my job at IBM in September 2017, never looked back ended up becoming a crypto millionaire thanks to the to token metrics. But more importantly, uh, we were able to help other people around the world also become crypto millionaires. And that's really what showed us the power of giving people access to powerful research. And that's what we're doing now with token metrics 2.0. So I would like everybody here to ask yourself, maybe even post it in the chat if you can, why are you in crypto? Are you in crypto to pay off your bills or credit cards? Are you in crypto to pay off your loans? Maybe you have student loans or car loans. Are you look, look, do you plan to quit your job like I did? Maybe you have a stressful job. Maybe you want to start that new business, that new venture you've always wanted to start. And having extra capital from crypto investing would l- let you do that. Or maybe you want to travel the world. Maybe you want to have crypto retirement. That was, that was the goal I had. So after I quit my job in 2017, in 2018, I traveled the world. We did over 35 countries in 12 months, and it was by far the best experience I've ever had. Or maybe you're looking to buy a house for your family. Maybe you're looking to give your kids a house. Maybe you're looking to pay off your mortgage. Okay, I see some people here are saying all the above. Thank you. Uh, Somebody is saying quit his job and fund his own business. That's great. Uh, Please keep the comments coming. So... Whatever reason you're in crypto, okay, somebody is saying financially independent, making much smart money with crypto, traveling and relaxing. So crypto can be viewed as an avenue or medium to achieve financial freedom. So lots of people like to talk about how crypto is going to change the world. Yes, that's true. But it can also change your life like it did for me, like it's done for so, for so many people around the world. It can give you financial freedom and let you really take full control of your life. Okay, so from, from traveling the world, meeting people, and getting lots and lots of feedback from our users, we've noticed in order to really build a next generation research and investment platform, we have to solve the challenges investors have right now when it comes to crypto investing. And those challenges they have are, when it comes to day trading, the research is in. The data is, is in. 65% of traders lose money. And 7% of traders make a profit. I mean, just think about those numbers for a second. For anybody who watched my interview with the co-founder of Bybit Exchange, which is one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges out there right now with over a million users a month, he was very upfront and honest. He told, he told us on that interview, which is now up on our Token Metrics YouTube channel, that 70% of their customers lose money. This is a co-founder of an exchange telling us that seven out of 10 traders on their exchange lose money. This is almost like gambling in, in, in casinos in Vegas. I mean, the house always wins. So looking at this, our question is, how do we solve this problem? 
we solved this when it came to the ICO space. So that in the ICO space, four out of five investments were scams or, or four out, out, out of five investments would lose money. But in 2017, we shocked the whole world and which is pretty much the main reason why we went viral. In a space where four out of five investments would lose money, our success rate, which was documented via our spreadsheet because we posted all our investments in there, four out of every five investments we made in ICOs were making money. And the average ROI was a 5X return. In a field where people thought it was nothing but scams, we were able to find those diamonds in the rough and make money. And this was fully documented. If we just talked about this, we probably would not be as popular as we were because everything was out there, transparent in the open. This really changed the entire space. But one thing we've also learned in crypto, which comes from regular equity investing, is that markets go up in an escalator and come down in an elevator, meaning that profits you earn over time can be wiped out in a fraction of the time. Just look at Matic Network this week. Matic Network was gradually going up. Then in just one day like that, it lost over 50% of its value. And that's something the average investor cannot really deal with. Who has time to be glued to a computer screen trying to day trade a, a cryptocurrency? The volatility is, is, is ridiculous. So the pain point investors have is that profits can be wiped out very, very fast. In addition to that, quant funds. Humans are now competing with quantitative funds, meaning that funds that invest with algorithms, with bots, with machine learning, with software, with all the resources in the world, and the average investor cannot compete with that. Lastly, there's so much noise in the space. There are over a thousand cryptocurrencies out there. Who has time to go and do in-depth due diligence on every single cryptocurrency? This is a huge challenge. Asset selection is crucial. So when it comes to asset selection, quant funds and trading, all of these are challenges that the average investor has to deal with. Now, I do want to have my team also chime in here. Uh, Bill, can you kind of share with us your perspective when it comes to trading and how markets go up in an escalator and come down in an elevator? Uh, sure, Ian, I'd be happy to. So when we talk about the escalator and the elevator, the technical term is called active portfolio management. And you're like, well, what does that mean? Well, when you're in stocks, you stick your money in the S&P 500 and you just sort of leave it there. That's how it's done in stocks. Um, in other markets, historically, all right, you have to be active. Meaning, you know, if you're buying Bitcoin at 3,000 and it rockets up, okay, you might have to take some profits and wait for it to come back down. Matic Network is another classic example. So you may have to make, six or seven trades per year. Now you're probably like, well, wait a minute, man. How, how do I make the six or seven trades? You've got to have good research and you've got to have research done by both humans and by quantitative methods like computer models. All right. So that's how we're looking to address this pain point by helping you move in and out, invest for the long term and stay out of trouble in the short term. Okay. Thank you, Bill. That's great. Okay. All right. And then we also have other forces at play. When it comes to wealth inequality, the top 1% rules. So if we look at the post-financial crisis, the U.S. government has printed over $15 trillion to buy and prop up stocks to a point where Wall Street and, and large fund managers like Ray Dalio are betting against the US equities market, thinking that it's going to collapse. They're taking billion dollar bets as a hedge against the stock market crash. And the top 1% now have as much money as the bottom 90% combined. This has really led to huge income disparity and it's causing lots of people to really not like or trust Wall Street, big government, the top 1%. In addition to that, it, so if we take this then and look at fiat currencies on a global macro scale, they're not helping either. If you go to countries like Argentina, Venezuela, Turkey with the Turkish lira, Zimbabwe, lots of countries now, their fiat currencies are, not, are no longer serving them to a point where they're losing money just holding their local currency. That's why Bitcoin is so big. I mean, I'm not just talking about this. I've personally gone to Buenos Aires, Argentina, and seeing how people are using Bitcoin. And in, out of all the countries I've been to, Argentina 
loves Bitcoin the most because to them, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies as a whole has helped them save money from inflation. And then lots of other countries are also having negative interest rates that penalize you for saving. That's why when people talk about banking the unbanked, I mean, the crypto revolution is at the forefront of that because technology innovates. Technology changes the status quo. Technology really brings chaos. And when chaos happens, chaos is a ladder. Chaos brings in new opportunities for growth. And that's what the the financial revolution is, is bringing. That's what crypto is bringing as well. Okay, so back to quants. Quants are dominating Wall Street. This is why partially why the top 1% are making even more money because they have the tools, they have the resources to dominate. So the most successful investment firm in the world is a fund that was, pictured, that was featured in, in this book from a Wall Street Journal writer called The Man Who Solved the Markets, how J- Jim Simons launched the quant re- revolution. So the, me- the medallion fund by Jim Simons is a fund built by somebody not from Wall Street. So he was a MIT math professor, a code breaker for, for NSA, who said, you know what? Let's apply mathematics modeling to investing. And by doing that, he built the most successful investment fund in the world. If you compare his returns to Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett has 20.5% returns since 1965. Yes, it's a longer time frame because he's, he's been investing for a longer time frame. But Jim Simon, since 1990, has a 39% annualized returns, something that Wall Street has never seen. And his entire methodology is still a secret because he doesn't really keep it, he, he keeps it to himself. He's not really sharing this with others. What we're trying to do is we're trying to take the same advantages they have and give you the quant advantage, but make this accessible to the whole world. Make this accessible to all of crypto, all crypto investors around, around the world. In the same manner we did with our spreadsheet, we're doing the hard work for you with the machine learning and the quant fund, and then making sure that anybody who wants access to this can access this. So if we look at a study from PwC in 2018, this shows the median hedge fund return for, for a crypto hedge fund. So in 2018, Bitcoin went down 72%, meaning that $100,000 invested in Bitcoin, you would lose $72,000. So while everybody in Bitcoin and everybody else in, in other funds was losing money, Quant funds still turned a profit. They turned 8% in a bear market. Imagine what they're making in a bull market. So to us, this really showed us that the quant revolution is not stopping. It's now in crypto and it's taking over. And the average investor cannot compete with a quant fund. I mean, how can you compete with people who have all the capital and all the resources working 24-7 to take your money? So with us, we really knew we had to build a platform that could have the, the average investor have an opportunity, have a chance. Uh, I'll stop here. Uh, anybody on the team want to chime in and kind of share their thoughts on this? Uh, Sam, any thoughts on, on, on kind of how, how Wall Street is really disrupting the economy? Uh, I guess I'll just give in a thought about J- what Jim Simon says. So Jim Simon says basically what he does is he looks for patterns in price movements because patterns in price movements are not random. So he searches through all historical data looking for anomalous patterns that uh, would not expect to occur at random. So basically what Jim's firm does is kind of similar to like how banks look for um, look through all their statements to find fraudulent transactions or how YouTube al- algorithm can help you pick what video you want to see next, except what Jim's firm does is it he- helps you pick what stocks are good to buy and sell. And that's kind of what we're trying to do. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Sam. All right. So, uh, okay. So up next, crypto still has room for growth. One of the things people keep asking us is, Hey, Ian, hey, Tokometrics team, is this still early to make money in crypto or is it too late? So if we look at what other people are saying or what other experts are saying, the World Economic Forum, the WEF, says that they predict 10% of GDP will be held in the form of tokenized assets by 2027. 10% of GDP. So if we take the current GDP for 29 projected, 
that means about nine trillion dollars will be in tokenized assets and, and cryptocurrencies, basically. And then if we look at the estimates from the Royal Bank of Canada, they're saying about the same thing. About $10 trillion worth of assets will be in crypto. So we have two different entities who have about the same estimate. So if we take this current cryptocurrency landscape right now, the market cap, it's about 225 to 200 billion or so. That means we have over 40x left in terms of potential growth in the crypto market in today's market, meaning that we have 40 times to possibly multiply our money. So we think there's still a big opportunity, but we think in order to take advantage of this now with all these other trends, the quant funds, we have to have the proper research and tools and platforms to compete with them because otherwise we'll get left behind. So how do we compete? Well, we think with token metrics, we're building really three, three main th pillars. The first pillar is human capital. We take the best investment analysts, the best developers, the best traders from firms like Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, IBM, and we take their brain trust, their knowledge, their systems of evaluating cryptocurrencies from fundamentals to technology and code reviews to te technical analysis. We take that human capital and we codify it. We turn that into a system. We turn that into software and code. And then we take that and we add data and analytics. We take not just quantitative data points like data from CoinMarketCap, but also qualitative data points, meaning that we have our team, we have Paresh, Sam, go through and manually review every cryptocurrency in our system and rate it on over 74 different data points. So we have the human capital, the human expertise, the data and analytics, and then we leverage what is the future, machine learning. So we have right now, we're, we're running millions of deep learning neural networks that compete against each other to make sure we can find any edge we can find when it comes to investing in a cryptocurrency, whether it's fundamentals, technical analysis, code reviews, everything is being back tested. And we're running these models a day. We're running over 20 million models a day in our entire platform. And that's constantly growing. So you're probably wondering, where does token metrics fit into the entire ecosystem and landscape? So if we look at this axis here, we have products or, or companies that are focused purely on crypto or have a st strong crypto focus to those that have a weak crypto focus. So really, our competition, if you go to tr tr traditional equity world, is Vanguard. What Vanguard has done for, the, for investing as a whole is, is incredible. A uh, uh, bill, can you briefly speak on, on Vanguard in terms of how, how it's widely used on Wall Street? Sure. Vanguard really pioneered the buy and hold method. You know, they pioneered the mutual fund in essence. So that gave, you know, all people access to the equity markets largely through their 401k. It made it really easy to just sort of drop money in and take advantage of what the stock market had to offer without, you know, <clears throat> sitting in front of a computer screen all day. So basically they offered a gateway to equities for the common man. Well said. Thank you, Bill. So what Vanguard did, we're trying to do the same thing for crypto and tokens. We're trying to take crypto mainstream by providing a gateway that can automate and manage people's investments. So that's why we're working hard with our team to become compliant because that's the ultimate vision is building that robo advisor for crypto that acts as the gateway. While everybody is talking about ETFs being the, the way that crypto goes mainstream, we think it could be a ro robo advisor. A robo advisor could be a proxy to an ETF because a robo advisor can really do the same things without having to go through all the different requirements and being traded on a public exchange. So other platforms out there, you probably heard of other robo-advisors like Betterment and Wealthfront. They kind of do the same thing, but they don't really do it for crypto. And then Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs has pioneered research. Uh, Bill, can you quickly comment on how Goldman Sachs has pioneered research? Yeah, so Go Goldman has made its living for years by just being the smartest entity out there and having the smartest people. You know, Goldman's research groups take up, you know, floors in giant skyscrapers. A long time ago, 
Goldman made its name by having some of the smartest people, the guys who invented the options pricing model, be their options research desk. So with Goldman, with the history of Wall Street, the best firms have had the best ideas. They've been able to help clients navigate volatile markets, okay? And then over the last 15 years, nobody has been better at that than Goldman. All right, thank you, Bill. So to kind of piggyback on that, so we're trying to do the same exact thing as Goldman Sachs. So here you have literally the company that invented token metrics, giving you token metrics. And we think that's, that's huge because if you've ever seen anybody out there doing data-driven research on a spreadsheet publicly, I mean, we pioneered that. And now we've built a platform that lets everybody around the world leverage the new next gen research we're coming up with, with the human capital and expertise. You guys can see we've scaled up our team, the software, the machine learning, we're modeling Goldman Sachs. Then if we go to the crypto landscape, we also have plot exchanges like Coinbase, Binance, Shares Post, Bank to the Future and CoinList. Those have a strong crypto focus, but it's self-service. They don't manage your investing for you. You have to manually do it. And then you have other platforms. That's kind of, kind of the same thing like TD, Meritrade, and E-Trade. These are platforms where you have to do the work. So with Tokenmetrics, our ultimate vision is to automate and manage your investing for you in a, compl- in a fully compliant and transparent fashion. All right. So how does this all work? Let's, let's get technical for a minute. So please bear with us here. We want to quickly dive into how our machine learning models work because that's a question we do get a lot. So our models are inspired by genetics and evolution, by the theory of natural selection. So the best way to really simplify this is, let's model how evolution works with giraffes. So let's say we're looking to breed giraffes with long necks. Imagine we're starting with giraffes with short necks. How do we do that? So what we do is, let's take 100 randomly selected giraffes and let's score them. Let's score them and measure them and sort them based on those that have the longest necks. Then those giraffes that have the longest necks will get chances to mate and will then create new offspring. So we then take those, let's say we take the two giraffes, male and let's say we take one giraffe, male and female with the longest necks and we have them create 100 children. So chances are those 100 children will have longer necks than the average prior giraffe population. And we keep repeating this over the course of 500 generations. So after 500 generations, we'll have giraffes with super long necks. So this is really how evolution works. And we're doing the same thing with our machine learning models, but for cryptocurrency tokens. We do the same thing in terms of rating and scoring a cryptocurrency. So let's take one cryptocurrency like, like Icon, ICX, and let's say we create a machine learning model just for the fundamental analysis. We create one model, then we take that, that one model and we create 100 different models derived from that. And we have them compete over the course of one day. And the winning model, the model with the, most, with the highest accuracy for fundamental analysis is the winner. Then we take that one model and we have it create a new generation. And that new generation also has 100 children. And we keep on doing this cycle over the course of 500 generations in just one day. Meaning that we're looking at over 200,000 models just for fundamental analysis, just for ICON, just for that one cryptocurrency. And then we do the same thing for over 100 cryptocurrencies in our system. Meaning that token metrics is looking at over 20 million models per day. So every single day, 24 seven, it's working hard trying to optimize and find the best model for predicting in this case, icons or any other cryptocurrencies, fundamental analysis. And we're doing the same thing for technical analysis, for technology and code reviews, and also the entire holistic grade as a whole, plus price predictions, the the 30-day price predictions. And we think this will really give us the ultimate edge. Yes, this won't be perfect. It's going to be impossible to be perfect. But guess what? We don't have to be perfect. The average trader as we mentioned before, seven out of 10 traders lose money. Our goal is one, not to lose money. 
And the next goal is to make money. So if we can build a system that beats the average, beats the average trader, we think that that gives us an ultimate edge. Uh, uh, Paresh, do you want to quickly comment on, on the technology as well? Yeah, sure. I really love this slide. <laughs> nice way, a nice analogy. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great way to explain what we do uh, with all crypto uh, and the models. So, in a nutshell, what I would um, say is we, we use basically hundreds, thousands of models, right? Uh, and tested them rigorously, like all historical data uh, on thousands of coins, basically. And that's also combined like many years data since they have originated, basically. So that gives you like trillions of data and we analyze that. Uh, and when you also consider like when they went up, when they go down and, and like that, patterns repeats daily, that creates like a lot more data. So we take all this, uh, data in our models, right? And tune the parameters, which is very important, you know? So we have the greatest models that we use, but the parameter tuning is the key components that we are doing in the machine machine learning to come up with the perfect parameters and the models combination for each coin, right? So for example, some models works for uh, coin X, may not work for another coin, basically. So, and we do this, uh, continuously, you know, that's the reason we are uh, able to come up with the correlates uh, related between the different uh, different coins. So, yeah, it's a great work. And uh, and again, as you say, there are still room from, uh, for improvements and, and the level of depth we are going, we can still go into deeper, you know, and then um, come up with uh, like better than what we are already doing now. So it's uh, continuous work. Thank you, Paresh. Now, uh, I do realize we are kind of running behind on time. So uh, don't worry. Uh, our team will be here afterwards. So we, we, we most likely will end up going over. For those who, who can watch the whole thing, this is being recorded. So we'll also email, email out the full re recording for those who, who have to leave at, at the top of the hour. Thank you for that. Okay, so let's talk about the portfolio management. So this is something that we don't currently have yet, but we are looking to work towards this. This is part of the vision of becoming a compliant robo-advisor. And the goal will be creating the best performing crypto portfolios customized for each investor. So the way that this works is we'll take an investor questionnaire. We'll have you fill out a questionnaire where you tell us your income, your investment time horizon, your goals, your tolerance to risk. And we take these different data points and we, we tune these parameters and we leverage data and analytics and our ratings to build the optimized portfolio for you using machine learning. So the machine learning would run millions of, model, of models and find the optimum portfolio, the portfolio, the, the, the portfolio at the efficient frontier. And more importantly, we'll use this to find the best investments and allocation and rebalance your portfolio for you. So you tell us whether you want to balance your portfolio weekly, monthly, biweekly, quarterly, annually. The idea is to really automate your investing for you so that you have a software that's working for you at the same time, basically making money as you sleep. Yes, it seems crazy, it seems tough, but that's really the ultimate goal because that's what, that's what Vanguard did and that's what we're trying to do as well. We think this is really the, the, the future. So this is kind of an idea of what we're working towards. This will definitely take some time, but if you get in early, if you subscribe to Token Metrics and, and continue past the trial, you have a lifetime discount to Token Metrics. Right now, the discount is 50% off, meaning that if you subscribe now, you lock in that price for the rest of your life. So whenever we do launch this, which we hope we, hope we can launch this sometime in 2020, probably more towards end of 2020, you'll be paying the same price. When Bitcoin goes to 100,000, if Bitcoin goes to a million dollars, your price will not change. Your price will be locked in for the rest of your life by being an early supporter, by being part of our crypto family and being early on. Uh, Abil, can you quickly just comment on, uh, in terms of portfolio management and how this really helps the average investor? Uh, certainly. So when you have a great combination of research where 
people can understand not only what's going on in the market now, but where it's going in the future, and then simultaneously give them a vehicle to actually drop money in and you know invest, then you're creating the best of what Wall Street has to offer without Wall Street. <laughs> like you do it with us instead of some big bank that's going to charge you some gigantic fee, whereas we're asking for like a monthly subscription price. So we're beginning with research, we're mixing technology, and then we're going to have that investing vehicle that's going to allow you to participate, right? So we're giving the investor like a whole ecosystem to take advantage of what we think is a bright future in crypto. Right. Thank you, Bill. All right. I mean, so to kind of really bring the story home, crypto equals financial freedom. I know it did for me. Uh, now I'm, I'm self-employed. I have my own company, traveled the world, met so many amazing people, met some people as well here on this, on this call. And crypto changed my life because yes, I was in the corporate world. Yes, I was making good money and it was good, but it wasn't really for me. That was something I knew to a point where the money couldn't really do it for me. I had to go out there and just have financial freedom and crypto allowed me to do that. That was back in 2017. The market changed in 2018. The market, the market changed because what was working was not working anymore because people were now competing with quad funds. So as the market went, went down, as Bitcoin lost 72% of its value, quant funds still made money. And now it's really time for us to, to innovate again, to, do this, to re reinvent the game and give people opportunities to be part of this financial revolution. And just to kind of wrap up here, we think token metrics is the future. Yes, that's a tough claim, but I mean, we, we almost single-handedly created the, the token metrics community. And now you have the people who made token metrics teaching you token metrics and making you that available through our website, through our different programs we have. So we think this is really a great chance for you to get in early and be here when the next trend happens. Because when the next bull market comes, people will need research and we'll have the best research around because we've been, we spent the last two years building this spend millions of dollars of our own money building this, and we're ready for this. Uh, now, Sam, do you want to kind of add anything to this? Uh, I think it's good. Good. Um, Bill, fresh? Well, I would say for me, like the reason to stay with token metrics is very simple. The transition from a bear market like 2018 to say a bull market in 2020, that process is not easy to go through and you need professionals to help you get there so that when the big trend starts, you're ready, you're invested, you're clear headed. So we can help you navigate this really critical transition phase. And that's the reason why we think you should stay with us. All right. Thank you, Bill. Okay. So now let's hop into the, the actual demo of token metrics and give people an overview on how to use the platform. Let me share my screen. If you have any questions, just type them in the chat and our, our team will go through at the end and answer the, the questions. Okay. All right. Let me sh share the screen. So here's token metrics to access token metrics. Just go to tokenmetrics.com. Click here to sign up or, or, or here. Once again, everybody gets 14 free days to try the platform. And after the, after the 14 days, then the charge happens. And then you also have a 30 day money back guarantee. So if for some reason you don't like the platform, just contact our customer support. It's down here in the chat below and send us a message and, and our team will, will take care of you. So there's really almost nothing to lose by trying token metrics. There is, it's a risk-free trial and we want to make it that way because we want to know, want people to love the platform before they join. We want to make sure you like the platform and you think this can help you before you actually give us any money. All right, so let's, let's take a look at the market right now. So with other sites, they typically just give you data. They don't really give you any analysis. They don't tell you 
whether they're bullish or bearish in a particular cryptocurrency and why. With token metrics, this is the ultimate research tool for crypto. So we come in here, let's say we're looking to build a portfolio. What cryptocurrencies should we have? We can just come here and sort based on grade. And our team has gone through and manually reviewed every cryptocurrency in here. So right now we can also tell you at this particular point in time, looking at, a, at the long-term perspective. So our perspective is one year and out, meaning that this, this is not really for a day trader, day trader in, in terms of the token grade. The best cryptocurrencies to hold based on this grade are one, Ethereum, two, Bitcoin, followed by Dash, Zcash, Eternity, Binance, and so on. So we've gone through and we've filtered out and made your entire research process very easy. So now as opposed to going through thousands of cryptocurrencies out there, we've given you in our opinion, which ones are the best right now. And we tell you why. You can go through here and sort by fundamental grade. So in terms of pure fundamentals, Bitcoin is king, followed by Ethereum, and then Hololchain chain and, and lots of other currencies. If you're a developer, or maybe you're just in it for the tech, we also give you technology grades that go through and tell you, okay, what's our take on the technology of this, of this cryptocurrency? So for example, people are talking about how this year wasn't really a good year to make money. Well, one of the best performing cryptocurrencies this year is synthetics. Guess what? According to Paresh and our team, that has the sixth best technology in the cryptocurrency world. So imagine being able to, to, to know that before other people knew that. What edge could that give you? I mean, I've heard some people say that this had 50x returns this year alone. I mean, so research is crucial. Research helps you make money even in a bear market. And it also helps you with trading as well. So for example, let's say you're a trader. You, you can go through here and look at our scores for technical analysis or even what projects we're bullish on. Let's say you, you're looking to short a cryptocurrency or let's say you're looking to sell something in your portfolio. You can go through here very quickly, filter out and see, okay, what are the opportunities to short or which ones are good to sell? Or, or the other way around, which ones are good to buy? Maybe you only want to look at cryptocurrencies that are bullish on, there you go, right? So one question somebody asked me is, Ian, what are some good cryptocurrencies to look to, to invest in? Sorry, let me, let me just go back here. So one, one of the things I love about this is we can just very quickly say, okay, you know what? We only want to look at cryptocurrencies with a fundamental score over 70 and also those with a fundamental score, I mean, with a technology score over 70. And very quickly, we'll filter out most of the market. So for me personally, looking at the scores, the scores do evolve and change over time, but I would say I wouldn't touch anything with a fundamental score over 70 or tech grade over 70. Both of them would have to be over 70 for me to, to, to even start looking at it, especially in a bear market where we think December might not be such a good month for crypto. So using this, we can really narrow down the scope of cryptocurrencies we, we waste our time in. We can filter out all the scams. And then same thing can be said with IEOs. People say, Ian, what IEOs do we have coming up? Guess what? If you subscribe to our, hard, to our investor plan and above, you have access to IEOs. So looking at this now, our team has gone through and every single day we're adding different IEOs different, or private sales. And in our opinion, these are the projects that really have the best potential. So right now, Sovereign is on our radar. Now, obviously this is not any kind of investment or financial advice. This is just us sharing our research, but we can also drill in as to why. So one of the things that is hard to find is actual analysis on the long tail of crypto. Everybody has analysis on Bitcoin and Ethereum. Nobody has analysis on the altcoins. People say those are bad coins that would lose your money. Yes, that's true. But that's how you also find the diamonds in the rough. That's how you find the, the icons, the wabis, the power ledgers, the dragon chains. And our team always goes through looking through all the garbage to find those diamonds in the rough. So for us, for example, Paresh has gone through and he says he loves the technology on Sovereign. And meaning... That gives us an edge because now we know this. So now we, we can add this on our watch list and be on the lookout for this, whether they're IEO, or whether they start trading on exchanges. We now have this information before anybody else does. Or for example, let's pull up a cryptocurrency. Let's say Icon. You can pull up Icon and all our analysis is easily accessible here. 
we give you a nice summary on ICON, the project, a summary of the fundamentals review, the technology review, the price calendar, any news here. Uh, this is Twitter, any videos, no, no videos here, and any trends happening on the Telegram group or, or, or on Google. So you can see what's happening with ICON over time. And then we also have real in-depth fundamental analysis for over 100 crypt cryptocurrencies. So you can go through here, and this is done by our team. So we have humans go through and actually provide analysis on every cryptocurrency. Uh, hey, Sam, do you want to quickly chime in on what you do when, you, when you're doing fundamental analysis? Yeah, sure. When we look at the fundamentals, we look at uh, like 25, 26 different data points. So we do an initial screening at the beginning, looking through like where the token sold an 80% discount in prior round. We don't want to be investing in any tokens that are going to have that are just going to come on the market and dump on us. Or we look at our 50% or more of the tokens owned by the community. Um, and we look at are the team and advisors and seed round investors token locked more than six months past when the tokens are liquid. So these are three questions that we'll look at right at the beginning. And if any of these are um, no's, then they're going to be losing a lot of points. Then we'll look at the scarcity. We'll try to figure out is the token economic model inflationary or deflationary? Is there a proposed token burn? So we're just trying to figure out um, the big picture on where, how the token is structured. Then we'll look at the market standing and we'll look at the customers and users. Do they, and I'll go through all of, um, I'll go through the telegram. I'll talk to the team. I'll see if they have customers and users. I'll look at their website to try to figure that out. Then I'll see, does the token fulfill any utility or is it basically just a fundraising token? So the token has to fulfill utility in our opinion. Then we'll look at, are they leading the pack in terms of the competition or do they have no competition? So I've seen thousands of cryptocurrencies in my research. So I know who, who the competitors are for these coins and these coins that are leading the pack are getting a good score on our yeah. sheet. Do you want me to keep going into it, Ian? Um, no, I mean, I, I think as you guys can see, we go through lots and lots of data points just on the fundamentals. And we make this easily consumable for you. So you guys can come, come in here and have all this knowledge without having to do all that research. So this gives you a time to value advantage because as opposed to having to scout through lots and lots of cryptocurrencies, we do it for you so you, you don't have to. And then we also have, have the same thing as well for technology. So Paresh on our team goes through and does a really deep dive on the technology, the code, and he makes it makes this easily accessible for anybody on our platform to view. Paresh, do you want to quickly share what you do when you analyze a project? Yeah, sure. So when it comes to the technology, we, we consider about 30 uh, data points. Uh, and uh, on top of that, we just make sure that uh, no corner untouched because this is where, uh, based on our experience, we saw that you know people play the games, right? So <laughs> in terms of the technology scorecard, we go through like initial screening. So make sure that, you know, project uh, is basically more, is, is using the blockchain technology and then need to use blockchain technology, right? And then if they are using the blockchain technology and what kind of promising they are promises, Right, and they are feasible to implement or realize kind of things, and then they have the valid use cases or not, and uh, uh, and whether they are protected from the commonly known attacks. So these are the like initial screening questions that we do, and if if all of them passes, then we go into the much uh, detail level in where we look for innovation, architecture, core quality, whether they are on mainnet or not, how their platforms are usability and, you know, team and their coding standard, uh, like uh, GitHub profiles, the way they code, the development practices they follow, and, and what kind of programming language even they are using, and, you know, like how they're documenting if a new developer is joining, how it is easy for them to use the platform and get up to speed, and that kind of things, basically. Okay, yeah, thank you, Paresh. So one thing I do also want to pinpoint, so for example, people have been asking us about the review on Hex, which is Richard Hart's new cryptocurrency. So the review is already live on our platform, 
and we even have the technology review. We don't really know anybody who's done a deep dive like we have in terms of making this not too technical, but very easy for even the non-techie to understand. So Paresh has gone through and told you exactly why we're not bullish on, on Hex. Because everybody else is just blindly calling it a scam, but we can exactly tell you why we don't like a project. So we don't really do any lazy research. We do really real in-depth research. So we can tell you, okay, this is exactly its code quality. They have less than 10,000 lines of code. They don't have any, co any comments in their code. There's no quality test coverage. There's no maintain maintainability index. So all this is being done by our team on the technology of projects so that you don't have to. Okay, all right, so let's kind of speed things up here. Uh, we also have, so we also have, let me go, go back to, to Icon. We also have performance metrics. So as an investor, you, okay, actually, sorry. We also have technical analysis. So as an investor or, or trader even, you have to really know where the trend is going. And we make that very easy for you to understand, even without being a trader. We have all the different indicators and signals a trader would need. And we, we make that easy for you to, to view. And we tell you whether something is bullish or bearish. And we don't just do this on the high market cap coins. Even on the smallest altcoins, if it's trading on an exchange, we can do the TI for you, which is something not even TradingView can do. TradingView only tells you their trading indicator only works on the top exchanges. We even work on, on, the, on the crappy exchanges. We can tell you what's happening and why. Uh, Bill, any, any, any comments on this in terms of really using TA in addition to your research? Yes. So in this case, token metrics gives, gives the client sort of this holistic approach. So we have humans looking at data. We have humans looking at this data on our team. Okay. And we mix it all together and we provide you with guidance and research. And you can mix that and do your own work with these tools and help yourself. Or, you know, you can rely solely on us. So we give you a comprehensive view and we give you choices. All right. The bottom line is we cover technical analysis soup to nuts from humans to robots. Right. And not a lot of people out there are doing that. Matter of fact, in the crypto space, probably no one is doing that. All right. Thank you, Bill. Well said. And then we also give you perspective on the performance of cryptocurrencies. So for example, if we want to compare whether we, we would have made more money holding Bitcoin versus Icon in this example, we have a data trove of information for, the, for any data nerds that would love to just dig into the technicals. So different performance metrics. So the sharp ratio, the drawdown, we have different graphs versus Bitcoin since, since the inception of, of Icon. So all this can really help you during your research process. Now, this is not for everybody. However, there are some people that do like having all these different kinds of data points that they can leverage. And one of the cool things we're working on now and, and still in the process of testing are our price prediction models that go through and over the course of the next 30 days using machine learning and neural networks, we actually try to predict where the price is going. Yes, price prediction is, is a very complex thing and very tough to do. However, we're fully transparent with our models. We tell you how accurate they've been over time, whether it's good or bad, so that you, you can have that data to make your own investment uh, actions. So for example, looking at ICON here, the model is predicting ICON is, is not going to really go up anytime soon. It's pretty much going to stay neutral or, or go down slightly. Now, this gives you more information when it comes to maybe you have, you have a big bag of ICON. It's not a good time to, to sell. If, if the model says, okay, you know what? ICON is going down. Maybe it makes sense to take some profit off the table and take your family shopping and buy them gifts for, uh, uh, on the holidays or vice versa. Maybe you have lots of cash on the sideline and the model says, hey, ICON, the fundamental, I mean, the, the technology is, just, is good, but the price is going down maybe now's the time to really buy the dip. Because don't forget, if, if we go back here to the summary, the technology for Icon is, is solid. It's solid. The fundamentals are, they could definitely be better, but the technology is solid. But maybe if the technology and the technicals align, 
maybe it now presents a good buying opportunity. This is what having research that not, not only works, but works in real time and updates every single day for you, it can really give you that edge. And for example, last week, uh, on our, we put out an email to our community saying, we thought Matic Network was, 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 was a good time to take profits off the table. And look what happened. A few days later, it down 50%. I mean, imagine what having research can do. It could possibly save you 50% of your portfolio because, I mean, crypto is a volatile market and every day matters, every minute matters, every hour, every second. So having the best research, research is, is very, very powerful. Or even if you're looking to diversify your portfolio, we also give you the correlation of every cryptocurrency in our system. What does that mean? Correlation tells you, okay, you know what? If ICON goes up, what other cryptocurrencies also go up? So in this case, we have OMG, PowerLedger, GNT. These other cryptocurrencies also go up. What if we want to find something that's the opposite? What if we want to find something that goes up when Bitcoin goes down? Then we find something that has negative correlation. Or maybe it's the other way around. Maybe you want something that goes down when Bitcoin goes up so that we can then short that. So this really gives you lots of avenues to find investment opportunities and also opportunities to, to short something. Uh, Bill, any comment in terms of correlation and how investors can apply that? Well, correlation is a great tool if you're going to have maybe a speculative or trading component of your overall crypto investment, right? So correlation is like, okay, I'm going to have 70% of my money invested in top coins and I'm going to speculate with the other 25%. Well, how do I quickly learn what are the best places to go and trade and move in and out if that's what you want to do? Well, knowing which coins go up when Bitcoin goes down may help you narrow down the pool of things that you want to trade and look at right? So you have to filter information, filter what coins you're going to invest in or trade before you start trading. And that's what these type of tools can help you with. All right. Thank you, Bill. Uh, and then, so our team is also making updates to the machine learning page. So we do understand this page is uh, very complex to read. However, we'll be, we'll be launching a new version that will, will be a lot easier. But the way to really read this right now is we're very transparent with you. We go through and provide. So this is the old grade, meaning this is the prior grade in the machine learning system. And the new grade is the new grade that the model has found that is a lot better than the prior grade. So for example, if we give, if we have a particular way of rating cryptocurrencies for fundamental analysis, we then test our assumptions and seeing if the computer can come up with a, a smarter way or more accurate way of grading fundamental analysis. And over here, it shows you the, the accuracy. So for example here, any grade in terms of having a score of 70 to 80 for fundamental analysis, right now, then this is alpha. So our team will go through and make this easier to read. This is the alpha, meaning that has this outperformed Bitcoin. So cryptocurrencies in our system, as of now, based on the new grade, there are two that have outperformed Bitcoin. So two out of two outperformed Bitcoin. So the accuracy was 100%. So we basically go through and for every grading tier, in uh, the new version, we'll have this be a lot easier. We'll just have it say a grade of A, B, C, D, or F. So it's easier for people to understand kind of like in, in, in grading school. And we go through and tell you the accuracy of, of each grade. And we back test it and we tell you every single day what the accuracy is. So stay tuned. We'll be putting out this new update in a, uh, by this month. We'll also be making updates to the portfolio page. We, we, we do understand not everybody has access to this page. There are some issues, but stay tuned. We'll be launching a new version for this by this week. So the idea with this page is giving you a better understanding of your portfolio, your investments, whether it's, an, it's a cryptocurrency or, or even IEO. And then also helping you understand the risks involved in your portfolio. So for example, lot, the main thing when it comes to investing is not just making money, but also saving money. So we'll be putting out a new version that helps you understand the risks involved 
in all the different assets in your cryptocurrency portfolio and helping you manage them. And then down the line, the idea is to really turn this part into a full-fledged robo-advisor once we're done going through the compliance process. But yeah, I mean, this is pretty much token metrics uh, as a whole. If anybody has any questions, if you want to contact customer support, there are two ways. First, we recommend you go to help.tokenmetrics.com and search our, our articles. We have lots of different guides. So if you have questions on how to reset your password, how to reset 2FA, questions on pricing, a question on different terms in our, uh, uh, when it comes to investing or different terms for cryptocurrencies, or even just if you want a guide on fundamental analysis, technology review, or data science, we have that here on our system. You can just come in here and look at the guides. So if, if you want to know what, what we look at when it comes to development, to, to liquidity, to the mind share, we have different, we have everything spelled out here in our help section. Or if you have a question on the price, let's say you want to know what the price is for uh, investor plan. You can just come in here, and type in that question, and it, it, it basically gives you the, the, the page with the, all, all that information. And then if for some reason your question cannot be answered here, just come down here and contact customer support and somebody on our team will contact you. So this is definitely a great resource for you to, to leverage when it comes to doing research and maximizing the utility of token metrics. And then we're also taking suggestions from the community. So if you go to feedback.tokenmetrics.com, you can send in feedback to our team, whether it's a bug or a token you want us to add to the system, we can have the community as a whole go through and, and submit ideas. So for example, right now, what people want the most is one, the robo-advisor, uh, two, portfolio recommendations, and three, the ability to add multiple portfolios. So all this is, uh, will be added in, in token metrics. If you go to roadmap, you can view the, the current roadmap of items we have planned. So right now you can see we have lots of different items planned. Then uh, as we change them to in progress and complete, it will also update. If you go to what's new, you can view the most recent updates we've made to token metrics. So last week, for example, we changed it so that anybody can now sign up for, for the basic plan for free without putting in a credit card. And then we also added some other minor features as well. So definitely make sure to leverage both feedback.tokenmetrics.com and also leverage help.tokenmetrics.com. All right, with that being said, that was a ton of information. We definitely want to make sure you have some time to breathe, you know, maybe have a drink. Actually, you know what? <laughs> so, so some uh, kombucha. <laughs> So we have lots of questions here from the community. So I want to make sure we get through all of them. Thank you to everybody who bared with us. I know we definitely went over the allotted one hour, but we want to make sure we're maximizing and giving you as much value as possible and answering every question you have. And for those who can, can make it, this is being recorded. So we'll also email that out for people who can make it or who have to hop off early. Okay, before I go to the questions, anybody on the team with any last comments? No, all good? Okay, all right, so, so first question we have here is, the current crypto market seems to follow Bitcoin ups and downs instead of the individual assets companies' performance. Do you see this changing in, in the near future? And if not, how will a robo-investor really help when it's still fairly random and based off of Bitcoin news? Okay, I mean, uh, Bill, any thoughts on this, this question in terms of cryptocurrencies following Bitcoin? Sure. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a great question. That's also a tough question, right? Um, I think Bitcoin is sort of like the S&P 500 in stocks. Like, you know, if the big boy is going up, then it allows the small guys to go up with it. So when we have a custom portfolio, uh, we think it's sort of going to work like this. Bitcoin might go up, you know, five or 10%, but in a bull market, you might have other coins going up a lot more. Now, it's really difficult sometimes for Bitcoin to be going, say, down and have other coins going up at the same time. Now, 
that may be a 2021 phenomenon where new currencies emerge to sort of compete with the bigger coins. Okay. They're out there. They're coming. We know that. So there may be a day where crypto acts like the fiat world, like, you know, the euro will go down and the yen will go up. Just remember, it's not just a crypto market, it's the cryptocurrency market, right? So as some currencies rise and fall, rise, others will fall and vice versa. So we do think the robo-advisor is going to work over time, all right? And we do think there will come a day where there will be a group of currencies that does their own thing, all right? But, you know, predicting out two years in crypto is pretty difficult. So just keep that in mind. Yeah. I mean, uh, well said, well said, Bill. I mean, I'll just add to that by saying, yes, Bitcoin. I mean, I think it's actually best said by, by the medallion fund, right? So Jim Simon says, yes, the market looks completely random, but it's not completely random. There's still some patterns in that, in, in the data. So it looks... Rather, probably the best way of saying it is it's semi-random. It, it may look completely random, but if you actually scientifically test it, it's not random. And same thing for Bitcoin, uh, especially for altcoins as well. Cryptocurrencies, the, the cryptocurrency market as a whole is not efficient. Let me repeat. Cryptocurrencies as a whole are not efficient markets. People think they're efficient markets, but they're not. Meaning that if they're not efficient markets, you can find patterns in the data and more importantly, not every edge has been fully taken out of the market. So that's why having research and data and also having the best resources with software and machine learning matters even more because it's not an efficient market. To have efficient markets, you first of all have to have perfect, perfect liquidity, which is not the case in crypto. So right, because you have information asymmetric when it comes to the information, the markets as a whole are not perfect. And that means there are gaps in the market that can be taken advantage of by people who have the best information out there. Now, in terms of token metrics itself. So for example, if Bitcoin is going up or down, yes, some cryptocurrencies follow Bitcoin, but those cryptocurrencies will know because it will show based on the, on the correlation. So earlier we showed you, we track the correlation of every cryptocurrency. So we can target cryptocurrencies that have the opposite correlation, that have negative correlation to Bitcoin. So that can help you diversify your portfolio so that you're not affected by the, the swings of Bitcoin and vice versa. Okay, next question from John. John is saying, will you show an IEO date when it, it is set? Yes, we will. So our system is fully automated to a point where all the IEOs in our system, as soon as they're they're on coin market cap, our system will automatically pull in that data and that price action and automatically give you the technical analysis score. So if that happens over the course of a day or two, it's, it's very, very instant. So meaning that an IEO, as soon as it starts trading, so the, the requirement on coin market cap is it has to be on at least two exchanges. So if it's on at least two exchanges and that data is available because we do plug, in, plug into their API, we can then give you the, the TA automatically. So yes, the IEO will update. And, and then our team also every three to six months or based on, on, on the community giving us feedback, we can go through and make updates on, on a particular project's rating. So for example, if a project ends, ends up launching a new feature or something changes or the code gets better, our team can go back and take a look again. So yes, yeah. that does. And I think that what John was asking is, will you show an IEO date when it is set? I think he's asking like, if Binance says it's coming out with a new token, oh, will you tell us when the new token's coming out? And the answer to that is yes. Yes. We, we will. We, yeah, we'll put that in the Telegram group. And then we'll also, I think that it's a good idea for us to put it right on the website for our users. So we'll, we'll definitely make that change within the next week or two. Right. Sounds good. Thank you, John. Okay, next question also from John. Will you use any algorithms or machine learning to change the weighted scores of human review of the projects moving forward to ensure the score of best reflective of true performance? Yes, so, so that's something we definitely do plan to do. That, that's really the, the whole premise of building what we're building. So right now, we're in the process of backtesting. We expect by this month to have the scores 
update every single day based on the machine learning. So right now, if you, if you go to the machine learning section of the page, actually, let me see if I can pull, uh, bring this back up here. So if you go to token metrics, so right now we have this, this is the machine learning score. And right now we'll be in the process of getting this score and feeding this back into token metrics. So it's one big recursive loop that keeps on feeding itself. So the AI will, will keep getting smarter and smarter and smarter. Uh, Paresh, do you want to quickly comment on in terms of when we can expect this to be added where this, this grading score will then update the scores on here? Because that, 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 that is definitely a goal. Yeah, so the, that's the like most priority item for us and actually working on it. So uh, I would expect um, I think we are almost uh, like 70% so next week sometime. Definitely, I think we are uh, releasing the portfolio and things this week, and the next week uh, we will have this page also updated. Yeah, thank you, Prash. Yeah, I mean, so the three main goals for us this month, fixing the portfolio issue people are having, having the machine learning scores be re recursive where they, they feed, in, feed into each other and keep getting better and better. And then three, optimizing the platform for mobile devices. We are, we are aware people who are viewing this on their phones or uh, don't, don't have access to, to view everything. So that's something we definitely do plan to have. Okay, all right. So the next question, let me go back here. Jesse Smith, what is a crypto wallet? And if you put your crypto wallet in a wallet, uh, sorry, if you put your crypto in a wallet, does it lose value? Um, possibly. I mean, this is definitely a, a basic question. So we definitely re recommend you go check out the, the guide in the help section. So a crypto wallet and all, all those different terms have been defined in the investment dictionary and also in the crypto definitions. But we definitely recommend you read books like Digital Gold and the Age of Cryptocurrency. They're nice introductions to crypto investing. So if you're a beginner, uh, those are the books I personally read and lots of other people have read to help them teach and to help them really understand what crypto is. But think of a crypto wallet as a digital wallet. It's kind of like a PayPal in a way, except as opposed to storing dollars or other fiat currencies, you're storing cryptocurrencies, online money, so currencies like Bitcoin. So hopefully that answers your, your questions. Okay, let's go to the chat here. We do have some other questions here in the chat. Actually, we have lots of questions. Okay, uh, or comments rather. So people that are saying they, they're in crypto for financial freedom, to, make <clears throat> level, to fly first class, <laughs> buy nice things. That's great, that's great. Okay, John has a question. He's saying, do you think that four out of five projects made money because of the projects themselves? or the virality of the spreadsheet caused more people to invest in those projects, specifically causing the price to rise? A uh, very good question, very good and fair question. So that's a question we also asked ourselves, but we don't think so. I mean, so we, we definitely know at the peak, the spreadsheet had lots of eyeballs and lots of people were, would access the spreadsheet. That's also why we knew we had to go token metrics because we had to build something more dynamic and more powerful where we could control who's viewing it, right? So with the platform we have now, not, it's, it's restricted in terms of the number of users. So only people who have, who have made accounts, either on the basic plan, the hardware plan, investor plan, or, or professional plan can have access to it. But to answer your question, we took down the spreadsheet, but we were still finding some good projects. Yes, the success rate did go down, uh, but we, we still found projects like Matic Network, before anybody did, before we even really made it popular. Um, other projects like Harmony and Elrond. So we were still finding the best projects in 2019, one year before anybody. And this is after we took down the spreadsheet, after it had all the hype and the FOMO. So we think the research is pro uh, works. Uh, Sam, do you want to add to that? No, I think that that's a good way to explain it. So I, the question was, did four or five make money just because everyone put a bunch of money in after we said that it was a good project? And I don't think that that's the reason that it made that much money. And some of these tokens like Icon, Wabi, Dragon Chain going 80x, 100x, it couldn't have just been from the amount of people that were following Ian. It was from a lot, a lot more money was coming into those projects. I'll add to that. I mean, if that was the case 
then we would never have a bear market. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'll just keep on going to the moon and beyond. <laughs> okay, next question. Okay, it's a comment. Hi, everyone. Glad to see you. Hey, Alice. Uh, glad to have you here. Thank you for being part of the professional uh, club. Okay, uh, great way to break down the machine learning. Thank you, J.E. Uh, Christian says, hi, everyone. I'm in crypto space because I felt in love for Bitcoin, and I'm not good at buying houses or buildings. That's great. Hey, we're, we're, we're glad to have you. Glad to have you here on this vision, on this ride, and we hope we can all go to the moon together. Uh, then Christian, because it's the same thing. James Wood is saying, who maintains our portfolio? I have ha I've had companies in the past maintain my portfolio and they disappeared, and that's why I'm asking. Great question. So what we're looking to build is something we're still building, obviously, and we'll be going through the regulation process with the SEC. That's the Securities and Exchange Commission in the U.S. And it would also require us to be part of FINRA, which is a self-regulatory organization in the U.S. But in terms of custody, we won't be holding any funds. We'll be using some form of some qualified, meaning a SEC-regulated custodian. So somebody like BitGo or some other custodian who would handle and holding the assets. So for us, we're not in the asset holding business because that, I mean, that's something that's, that's big in its own right in terms of security, technology, and the resources. So we want to outsource that to somebody, which is what other exchanges use. So for example, platforms like Binance, Binance and others, they use custodians. They use either BitGo or Prime Trust or, or even some other custodians. So for us, it's, it's, it's about really leveraging the best in the industry, and that's something we, we plan to do. Okay, uh, next question. Is 100X Advisor still alive? Can we also invest together with 100X? Um, I mean, 100X Advisor is alive, yes. If you go to our, our site, is 100XAdvisors.com. Uh, but we, we, unfortunately, we don't co-invest with other people. Uh, but I mean, th the best next thing you could do is join Tokenmetrics Professional, where you can be part of our professional network and get access to all the different people we know all around the world, other experts we have in there. So for example, we just added Ivan on Tech in our group and some other big names, other investors. We're adding even other partners at funds. So you can basically have access to the best people around the world. Uh, not for, not for, not for co-investing or financial advice, I mean, but just for, because your network is your net worth. So being around the right people can really change your entire investing, especially if you're looking to go full-time into crypto. We definitely recommend you join Tokenmetrics Professional. For example, we have a developer, Nick, who just joined. He's launching his own blockchain project, and he wants to leverage our network and our connections to help him with expanding his company. So it's something I definitely recommend. Okay, uh, two more questions. Why are... This why are some, why the summary? Okay, sorry, I'm just trying to read the, the text. Uh, the summary reads in some cases are bearish, whether it is green or red area. Okay, I think it's talking about the summaries or the, the fundamental summaries. So one thing to note, okay, let me, let me share the screen here. So you have to take everything into, you have to look at everything at a holistic point of view. So because sometimes the grays could tell you two different things, but also be telling you the same thing at the same time. So for example, for me, I would prefer, my favorite part of token, token metrics is the overall grade, which tells you everything put into one single holistic grade. However, one thing could be, for example, a trading indicator could tell you it's bearish on a particular cryptocurrency. So it, it tells you it's bearish or, or it's time to sell. But this indicator is only looking at the last seven days. So one thing could be, something could be going down and it's time to sell, but eventually it could turn bullish. So maybe the technical analysis says one thing that, hey, this score is going down. And maybe the trading indi indicator says it's bullish because maybe it's the time to buy the dip. Uh, Abdul, any, any takes on that? in terms of really kind of having conflicting indicators? Well, I mean, in technical analysis, the art and the science of it is 
figuring out which indicator to pay attention to right now that's that's what analysts do that's why we have the machine learning and the humans working together it just gives us a broader menu of things to help us filter down and make a decision now in terms of what i think the client is asking about the dials you know you can have different categories give different signals, right? So it can be green on some and red on others, right? The bottom line is we're going to give you the tools to sort of make a decision based on whichever factors you like. You know, Ian likes the overall grade. I'm kind of more partial to the technical score. Um, so we let you look at it any way you want to look at it. Yeah. And, and one thing I'll add, so we also have different thresholds for, for the fundamental, I mean, for, for each grade. So for example, when it comes to technical analysis, let me, let me pull up, I can, let me, let me go back to sharing my screen. So looking here at ICON. So for us, it's a project has to be over 70% for us to really even think about putting any money in it right now. Now this may change once we update the machine learning model and the weights are different and the, the grades change. But for us, because the market is very, very rough right now, we want to really be bullish on something before we start putting capital in. So that's why, like, for example, the icon is showing very bearish, even though it's green right now, because I would say this is kind of like a score of a, a D. So for us, we would like to, for it to have a grade of a C or higher, so 70% or higher, which, which in some parts of the world is, 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 is a passing grade. Okay, all right, let me go back to the next question. How do we know that scores are unbiased? Because the scores are constantly changing. Very good question, very good question. So, I mean, we've built what we think is the most transparent uh, scoring system because everything is here. Uh, if, if, if we go here into the, the fundamentals, we have every question here. We have here the, so right now, not everybody has access to this. This is something we'll be fixing. Uh, initially it was just for the admins, but we'll make this available to everybody so everybody can view the different points we have for each topic. So you know exactly how many points it's getting. And then for transparency, uh, this month we, we plan to, to fix this page so that you have full transparency on the grading system. You have the, the prior grades and the new grades. So as it's changing, you can see the accuracy and, and the performance, whether it's, whether, whether it's outperforming Bitcoin and it has alpha. So we want to make sure everything is fully transparent for everybody. Okay, all right. Uh, let's go here to the next question. Okay, so will you be publishing what you personally plan to invest in? Um, right now, not at the moment. However, if you do go to our website, so if we go back here, just go to the about section and let me just move my screen here. About section, sorry, not that. Uh, about and disclosures. We have all the holdings of our team. So you, you can see what I'm holding. You can see what Paresh, Bill, and Sam are holding and our entire team. And then we, we, we are thinking about possibly making an option to follow people's portfolio. So that's something we'll, we'll likely add to the, we'll add here as feedback, then have the community vote on it. So being able to have public portfolios, I'm not sure we put that here yet. Actually, yeah, yeah, so actually we do have it here. So if you, do, if you do want that feature, just go to our feedback page and vote for this, public portfolios. So being able to have people, whether me or others, basically have a public profile where they can share their portfolio in terms of their portfolio weights. And you can even have a news feed that shows you whenever there are changes made to the portfolio and you, everything can change. So that is something we have thought about. If you do want that feature, be sure to make your voices heard. Okay, I mean, I think 
that's pretty much it. Uh, anybody on the team with any comments, last words before we wrap up? I know it's been a while. It's been a ton of information. Last words. Any, any last words, Bill? I mean, okay, how about this? Just kind of give people a recap in your perspective why they should continue to try with tokenmetrics. Let's begin with, with Bill. Okay, well, crypto is a volatile world, right? <laughs> It is, it is a world where you don't want to get discouraged because of how important it's going to be for the future, okay? And then in the short term, you want to make money. You want to understand the market. Um, knowledge is power, right? So if you're new and you, know, you want to learn about what a wallet is and what a cryptocurrency is, or you want to trade and make money and make sure that, you know, you're there, your portfolio's good for the next big money-making event, whatever that is, then the group that you want to trust is not a bank, it's us. So right. stay with token metrics. Thank you, Bill. Uh, and then Paresh? Yeah, I mean, as a technical person, I would say, the level of effort that we are whole team putting, right? the research that we're all doing, and what people can see is just good things, right? <laughs> so it is, it is something like, you know, we are digging the gold for people and, <laughs> and giving away, basically. You know? So that's, that's what I can see uh, the token metrics, metrics platform doing it. And the details, statistics, analysis, algorithms, technology-wise or fundamental-wise, the, the things that we have on token metrics, I don't think anyone can have seen anywhere, actually, and anyone doing it anywhere near to us. Right. Thank you, Paresh. Yeah. And then Sam? Uh, yeah, so I just want to congratulate everybody for being a part of our early adopters and locking in the lifetime discount of 50%. That's really awesome. And I guess the reason that I would want to invest in cryptocurrency, I would probably start by talking about the fact that the legacy financial systems are just completely not working for the common man. Basically, in 1910, six people created these, this system. Six, uh, Morgan Stanley and Rockefeller, they created the Federal Reserve System, the central banking system. And these six people are basically just... Um, the, or, or the Federal Reserve System is just pumping money into the markets. And as it puts more and more money into the markets, nobody really has any idea if the system is going to work. It's all a bunch of money that's not backed by anything. Like gold has a real actual intrinsic value. But when we came off of the gold standard, um, money doesn't, isn't backed by anything except for the fact that the government says that it's worth something. And... With cryptocurrency, I think cryptocurrency is experiencing a, a move, another move up. Probably within the next few years, we're going to see that uh, this tiny market, the size of the cardboard industry, the two hundred billion dollar market, is so small compared to the seven trillion dollar gold market. And Elliott wave theory says that markets move up parabolically and then down, and then move up again parabolically. So I think that the next move up is going to be just like um, Royal Bank of Canada said, just like the World Economic Forum said, I think the next move up is going to be to $10 trillion. And I think that we are going to be able to, our robo-advisor is going to help you guys who got in with a discount of 50%. It's going to help you guys uh, get involved, get invested into the correct cryptocurrencies. You want to be in the right cryptocurrencies, the ones that are going to actually change the world, the ones that are going, to, the ones that are going to be the Amazons, the Netflix, the Googles of crypto. And crypto is 100% here to stay, and it's going to be here for a long time. So that's what I have to say. So sorry, I was on mute. So one, one last question here from Tesfaye. Great to have you here in the, in the call. He's saying, I see the value in the information you provide. Trust is a big issue in this industry. Why should we trust you? Great question, great question. 
I mean, so first thing first, I would say why you should trust us. I mean, we're, we're, we're going through the process of doing this the right way. So not only did we just really, in a way, create the tokenmetrics community and ecosystem, but now we're innovating it. And now we're going through the regulatory compliance of doing this the right way. So that includes me getting my Series 65 ex investment ex advisor exam, applying to the SEC for regulation, uh, bringing in the best team in the world uh, who has experience in doing this. Uh, Parish Sani comes from Goldman Sachs Global Investment Research Division. Uh, Bill comes from Goldman Sachs and uh, Morningstar and Charles Schwab. And then, I mean, I think the, the most important thing is we're trying to do this in a compliant fashion. And then all our data is going to be made publicly available so everybody can look at the data and if they choose, do their own investment actions, right? Whether you want, you want to follow our advice or not, but really we're giving you a tool and a platform you can leverage, making it fully transparent in the same way our spreadsheet was fully open source and transparent. People could see everything. We're making everything fully transparent. And by going through compliance, we're complying uh, across all the different requirements the regulators would need, would need, whether it includes them being able to audit us, us having to abide by any kind of regulations they have, whether it's custody and what have you. We're going through all the legal requirements. I mean, I know we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars just on legal fees alone. I mean, I have two lawyers that I'm working with every single week on different things just for token metrics, one for the business, one for the securities. So we're trying to do this by the book. And then, I mean, we're well known in this space and I think that our name really kind of speaks volumes to the work we've done. If you go anywhere, whether people love us or hate us, they, they all know who we are, Ian Belina, Tokenmetrics. And we think that really shows how early we've been. We've been pioneers in the space and that's something nobody can take away from us. I mean, we, we own the mind share when it comes to, to Tokenmetrics. And Tokenmetrics is a verb. When people say, when people go into a project's chat room and say, what are the Tokenmetrics? I mean, those are people that, that come from our ecosystem, our community. And we think by just doing everything above board, being fully transparent and working with the biggest names and following the, all the legal rules out there, we think that will hopefully embolden trust. Okay, a few more questions here. Um, will robo-advisor require being accredited investor? Uh, There'll be two, two different vari variations. Uh, this is obviously pending approval from SEC, but the idea is there'll be two different versions, uh, one for regular investors, basically retail investors, and one for institutional investors. Okay. Jason says, despite a couple of big losses, i.e. Sparkster, I still trust your analysis and what you're building and look forward to more success. Thank you, Jason. I mean, so just to kind of add on to that, so yes, Sparkster and some other, other investments were not perfect. But for us, those really challenged us to start afresh because if it wasn't for Sparkster, we would not have brought on Paresh to really bolster our research division. So, the, I mean, because all of us are investors. We hate losing money. There's nothing worse than losing money and then getting publicly shamed for it. So for <laughs> That made us really look internally deep in our system and make sure we made, we took every mistake we made and we learned from it. And that's why, I mean, even this year, that's why finding projects like Medic Network, Harmony, Elrond, to us, that shows us, okay, our research is getting better. Yes, it's not perfect, but if you put things into perspective, the average VC in Silicon Valley, a good return for them is, is having 10% of their investments make money meaning one out of 10 investments is the next Facebook, the next Uber, the next Airbnb. So if you look at our entire historical investments, our rate is still beats that. I mean, our success rate is still pretty good, but we're always challenging ourselves and trying to get better and, and trying to become perfect. It basically reminds me of the quote by the famous Hall of Fame coach, uh, Vince Lombardi. Uh, for those who aren't in the US, he's a football coach, American football coach. He's basically the best football coach of all time. And the code goes something like this. Every day we wake up and chase perfection. Yes, we, we might not catch it, but we'll always get better. Uh, I'm basically paraphrasing, but that's really the, our team's mindset. 
every single day, we're waking up and chasing perfection. We're trying to make our models better and better and better, our system better and better. Yes, it will never be perfect, but it will always be better. And that's what we can really say in the last two years. We've made our entire system better because we can say now sparks that would never have seen the light of day because we have experts that we've hired from Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, uh, Paresh, and others that go through and do deep code reviews. And now we have a lot more data points. And now we even have the machine learning. So we're getting better and better and better. And we think that's huge for the space. For us, do you remember what Sparkster scored when you did it? Yeah, so when you guys interviewed me, right, the Sparkster, well, I gave the least score, I think. Yeah, I mean, if token metrics was around, Sparkster would have never happened. <laughs> I mean, the, the thing is, we are not getting any corner untouched now, right? Like each and every aspect of the whole project, including history, people, coding, everything we are looking. So I, I don't think, uh, you know, there is any chance, uh, you know, like even 0.1% chance that the project like Sparks can come on board with token metrics going forward. All right, thank you, Paresh. Okay, so Tesfai is saying, um, let me see, if you think long-term and provide the best service for the customers, I am sure you will succeed. Good luck and thank you. Yes, absolutely. Thank you for, for, for joining token metrics. Our vision is definitely a long-term vision and our focus is on, is on making our customers happy. Then Rishon, Rishona is saying, there is always a blessing and a lesson, especially when you have a bigger plan. This was good timing for you and look forward to more success and keep being transparent. Thank you, thank you as well. Now, I think that's, uh, that might be the last question here. Okay, John is saying, thanks for the presentation and, and answering everything, honestly. Looking forward to seeing where this goes. Thank you everybody as well. So just to kind of recap, we, we hope you join tokenmetrics.com and you continue past the trial because there's so many forces at play. We've all seen 2018 was a rough ride. We've had a bear market for almost two years, but we fundamentally know cryptocurrency is not going anywhere. There's so many forces at play from the top 1% really making all the money and everybody else being unsatisfied to world global economies. Hong Kong is in a global recession for the first time in over 10 years. Hong Kong was the world's most visited city, according to Bloomberg this year. The world's most popular city is going through a global recession. Currencies all over the world are, are falling in value. China plans to issue its own digital currency. Lots of other global governments plan to, to have the same thing done. The World Economic Forum says 10% of the world's GDP will be tokenized in 2027. The Royal Bank of Canada expects, trillion, expects crypto to become a $10 trillion market. That means there's still 40X room for growth. What, what would 40X in your portfolio look like? But to take advantage of this, you're now competing against all the institutions coming in from Wall Street, the hedge funds. To compete with them, you have to have the best research. You have to have somebody who's on your side who's fighting for, for the average investor. And that's the vision of token metrics. That's what we're doing. And we hope you join us. And we'll wrap up by saying, as we've said before, the moon is not the limit to the moon and beyond. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. It's been a pleasure. And we'll see you at tokenmetrics.com. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.